Only death awaits you all. But do not fear, for it is through death that a new spirit energy is born. Soon, you will live again as part of me. I do not fear death. I've already seen hell. Hello, all you beautiful people, past, present, and yes, even those in the future. Welcome back to a special episode of Final Fantasy and D&D. Today, I will be looking in depth about the One-Winged Angel Sephiroth and see if we can convert him into Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition for y'all to use in your games. This will be a switch from the normal format of videos that I've done in this series so far, so if you like this kind of video, leave a comment down below, tell me who you want me to create next, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more content like this, all that good stuff. Sephiroth is the main antagonist of Final Fantasy VII, and he was a soldier that was better than the rest. He is a really powerful character in the games he is in, and converting his abilities and stats was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. While I will be using various games as reference, I'll mostly be sticking the stats that he is given in the original Final Fantasy VII game and use games like Dissidia to fill in the gaps. Looking at his stats, he seems invincible at first glance, and at this point of the game, well, he is. But translating it into D&D tells a different story. By dividing the current level and stats of the character by 5, we are able to tell that he is at least level 10 at this point of the game with above average stats with amazing constitution and wisdom scores. His health is drastically high, sending out a good 652. To balance this out, we are going to keep his armor class at a decent 14, with the explanation that he has both the gold armlet and the tough ring to provide him with a mage armor-like effect. Speaking of his gear, each one of them holds a certain amount of material that gives him access to magic. He's been seen using various types of spells for years, giving things like Fireball for a different damage type, or something like Suggestion to help him manipulate enemies. And when he's not using magic, he has his legendary katana, Masamune. This 10 foot long blade can do a lot of damage, and with the finesse property, he can wield it with just one hand. With this legendary blade, he can use unique actions like Octoslash that deal massive damage to one enemy or Skintala... Give me one second. Scintilla. Yeah, Scintilla. I knew how to pronounce that word. The ability that allows him to block incoming damage and dish it back to opponents. His strongest move, outside of the black material because Carl forgot to add it when he made the sheet, oopsie, would be his Sin Harvest Angel legendary action. This move can deplete a creature's HP to one, as well as a number of spell slots depleted if they are a caster, as long as they fail the constitution check, however. And that's all I really have to say about this legendary boss. The stat sheet is being shown now as we speak, and honestly, like I said, before, this was a pretty easy one to do. A lot of his stats and abilities can be taken from the core rules of 5th edition, and with the exception of a few abilities and homebrew stuff, there isn't much that needs to be changed at all. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have suggestions for the next boss, hey, or even hero, who knows? Leave them in the comments down below so that way I can take a look at them. Just remember to stay classy, stay beautiful, and most importantly, I hope all of you fantastic people watching have yourself a good day.